surely you are familiar with the term parts bin special or like parts bin bike or just parts that are in a bin that are left over from builds or upgrades that you have done in the past. That is what I was sent by Dan, a subscriber through the channel, here. Parts and pieces of a SRAM 8 speed group set that I think I'm gonna be able to cobble together to make a bit of an eight speed one by group set drivetrain hack parts bin thing on the commuter bike. Oh yeah, this should work. And actually for my own sanity, I'm going to unplug this microphone and hope that the audio is better. But beyond that, considering this 10 speed one to one exact actuation, and this has a one-to-one -one ratio cam here. I'm going to assume that the shifter will work with either or. And going from a heavy X3 8-speed rear derailleur to an X7 has some sort of benefit in one way or another. I think. I'm not entirely sure yet. We're about to find out. And my God, I apologize in my fit of excitement. I seem to have forgotten my manners to introduce this video. Welcome to Tinker Tuesday, the show where we just kind of play around with the stuff I have in the shed and the parts that either get sent from people who want to see it try and get on a bike that I buy or that just happen to be laying around from previous builds, as with today. A mix of the two parts I had laying around and parts that were sent. Thanks, Dan. forward to not having to take the air out of these every time. Now as we're moving along at a pretty good pace here, just kind of throwing everything on, this is the part where you tell yourself that you're just throwing on parts just, just to get to the point where you can like check and see if it's going to work, if it's going to shift, and like if it makes sense and all that good stuff. You're very kind spirited towards like all these parts that you're putting on, you're like, you know, you're, you're pretty dirty right now, you know, there's a lot of stuff built up and salt damage all right here. Geez, you could use some cleaning. And you tell yourself that if, if you get it all together and that it's gonna all work, that you'll clean it afterwards. But this is all a lie. You're not gonna do that. If it works, you're just gonna ride it. I must admit, I am genuinely excited to see if this is all going to work. I'm willing to bet that it will. Now I have a little bit of shift cable here left over from something. I'm gonna use it. Now I just need like the tiniest little bit more. This is brake cable, I don't know if that's a good idea. Oh, another chain. Now it's not like entirely obvious, I am rushing this just like the tiniest little bit and trying not to talk too much because I think I probably do have a little bit of daylight to play with if I can get this all together in like a half decent timeline. Then we can probably actually, for once, go out and ride something that we've played with from start to finish in a video. So if it seems a little impersonal this time, I apologize. That is purely because I want to be able to ride this in this video and see if it's like abysmally bad or if it's like tolerable. I tend to shoot for tolerable. Bad is okay if you can get away with riding it a little bit. Abysmal, abysmal no.
The fact that this is not internally cable routed is the real MVP here. Where's my little cable? No! Right, yep, back pocket, got it. Thanks everyone, thank you for letting me know. Not worth nothing, I think that's rideable. It works! And it works like surprisingly tolerably, which of course is surprising for the mishmash of parts that are on here. 10 speed derailleur, two, eight speed shifter, three, 11 speed, 10 speed chain ring, four, 10 speed chain. You know, like a bunch of stuff that's not supposed to work together. Which in all truthfulness, um, it actually doesn't really work together, but everything's in such like a worn out kind of garbagey state that they all kind of work together in that worn out garbagey state of bliss. Making like a drivetrain that on your crappy commuter bike with sweet fenders kind of work. These conditions, these conditions suck more than I thought they were going to, but OG vlog viewers. How many memories does this view bring back? Six? Seven? Let's just go back to the shop. Okay, so we kind of know in practice that this random assortment of parts bin parts do indeed work together, kind of. I don't want to go as far as to promote the illusion that I'm recommending you do this. I'm not. Though, if you do have like a bunch of parts and you want to see if they work together, you should, you should definitely mess with it. But I think to finish this off, it's worth maybe like looking at the little bit of theory as to why this, this like random kind of motley crew of parts are sort of like maybe tolerably working together. Here is another very quick rundown of what actually went on the bike. SRAM 10-speed X7 rear derailleur, mono 12 through 34 8-speed cassette, a wolf tooth narrow wide 50 tooth chain ring, and it had to go on the uh it it had it had to go on the silver cranks because the black cranks that were on here were 130 BCD and these are 110. So that is why that swap happened. Along with along with this X4 8 speed uh, trigger trigger shifter. Oh, oh. Worn out 10 speed chain that I in fact did not have enough chain to do this with. So I put together a couple quick links. See? Anyone who tells you you can't reuse quick links or have more than one has not tried to hack something together. Or has more money than I do. Now like I said earlier, every part that went on this is just that like little bit more worn out than maybe you'd want to use on like a new build, but for this type of application it's perfect. And as each part kind of wears out a little bit more, tolerances go up and well sloppy stuff can work with sloppy stuff. And that, in my opinion, is why a 10-speed derailleur hooked up to a 8-speed shifter can work with a 8-speed cassette with a 10-speed chain. The 11-speed chain ring is a gimme. All three 30-second chains have the same inner width between their plates. Now, when it comes to pull ratio between the shifter and the derailleur, this is where things, in my mind, get a little bit interesting, and why I have the added advantage of using a narrower 10-speed chain on the wider-gapped 8-speed cassette. And here's why. So the spacing between each cog of an 8-speed cassette is understandably larger than that of a 10-speed one. So its ratio for the shifter is going to be a longer pull on the derailleur than what a 10-speed one would be. It's not a crazy amount, but as you shift up past the 5th and 6th click, it really starts to compound and you find that the derailleur is actually pulling a little bit too far. For being a 1-to-1 -one ratio 10-speed derailleur, 
versus a one-to-one -one ratio eight-speed shifter. The derailleur does want to go up that little bit more. This, in my opinion, could prove to be a problem if you were using the proper eight-speed chain because the outer plates are wider indeed, and they would want to maybe ramp up into the next cog. But because we have a narrower 10-speed chain on there, it gives me that little bit of room to allow the derailleur to just pull that little bit further along and not shift up into the next cog. I bet if all these parts were new, it wouldn't work. But they're not new. They're old parts that got sent to me or I had that we made work. And now my commuter bike, well now my commuter bike is just that little bit nicer to ride home on days where you're not feeling it. All right. Uh, ch check out the stitch pattern. This is the stitch pattern that is going to be used on the new five panel hats. Also, these shirts are going to be coming very soon. I'm getting them all made locally. Thanks.